but basically, if you're if you don't know anything, Canada is a country that has been withered with indigenous genocide, and that's what we are built off of. You can't say Canada's a free country or Canada's a great country. It isn't. Look at the history. Okay, so like, <sighs> quick little trigger warning, but like, residential schools, like, that's that wasn't okay, and the fact that that happened is really bullshit. And that that is like the genocide and the trauma that has happened then is still impacting people today. My great grandmother was a residential school survivor, and that has infected me, who has affected her son, who has affected my mom, who has affected me. And that's it's just bullshit. It's bullshit that that whole little tear drip drop thing is happening still, and it should be ended. And the Canadian government needs to take responsibility for what they're doing. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say that the count for Indigenous children found in residential schools in the United States and Canada is almost at 10,000. Um, 10,000. Shameful. It's ridiculous that that number even had to exist in the first place. We shouldn't have even been counting. There shouldn't have been people hidden. Like, the church is ridiculous, and what they're doing is ridiculous, and the fact that, like, some people are defending them. Like, some, it, this weird priest guy somewhere, he was like, oh, it's what God wants. And it's like, bro, like, if God, like, this going off the statement that God did exist, he, he loves everyone equally, like nothing, you know? Religion. But so yeah, and I'm just gonna tell a funny little story that I learned from my friend about Fairy Creek. But there was this person from Wesotan who came to Fairy Creek and she had this little dog and it was like a husky corgi mix. And like, I'd never seen a husky corgi mix before. Like, I don't even know those existed. But like, so when she was up in Wasoatan, she was told to take the dog because it couldn't run fast enough. And like, the wolves were gonna eat it. Like, I kid you not, because like, this dog had the littlest, stubbiest legs and it, it couldn't run. So they gave it to this girl, and now she's at Fairy Creek, and my friend saw the dog, and it was like, yo, where'd you get this dog? <laughs> and it was like, Wasoatan. So, awesome. no, pretty funky dog. That dog, awesome. been places. That dog has been places, and that, oh, and that yeah. dog is oh, going God. places. Anarchy yeah. dog. Anarchy dog. Oh, we gotta get a photo of that dog. I will get the photo out there. Awesome. I will grab it from my friend. Okay. Awesome. Um, our collaboration with VTech, Acorn and Community Fridge Victoria. I don't know who's speaking about this. Uh, uh, I should probably do a quick one, but can you just film? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, just like one here and I'll... Yeah. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, that was awesome. Uh, my name is Kim and I'm an uninvited guest here, settler Acadian. My family came to the shores of the Mi'kmaq in 1636, trying to escape France, which was horrible at the time. And uh, we have work to do as uh, settlers and I'm glad that we're all here. So yeah, uh, we, we supported ACORN. They did, ACORN BC did an action. So the Anarchist Network of Vancouver Island uh, supported the Living and Lived Experience of Homeless Network and Victoria Tenants Action Group and the Committee Tenant Homelessness Victoria and we supported ACORN BC's event. So they're a part of our network um, and I should have clarified that for our, 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 our posters <laughs> uh, but that's cool, ACORN's cool with that. But basically that's what's happening is that we're, we're trying to form a network to help get housing built. We need housing, like holy mackerel, hey? I mean, what they're offering us is uh, soft incarceration. Like that's what people, uh, you know, down here have said, it's like soft incarceration over at 844 Johnson and our place, all these places. You know, you gotta go through a gate, you have to have, you know, talk about, and, and we've been against the vaccination passports. I am vaccinated, I'm triple vaccinated, and, and that's, uh, I mean, a lot of people were surprised because I'm quite anti-Big Pharma. I, I've been uh, working with uh, the We Are Not Alone group, WANA. We Are Not Alone, they formed right after the Second World War uh, for uh, people who were labeled with mental health illnesses so that they could round them up. And so people realize we better organize because no one's going to come and save our asses, you know. Uh, so they organize We Are Not Alone and it's still around. 
Um, so I've been against big pharma, and I'm not stupid either. I'm into science, and I understand nature and, and earth and all that. Um, and uh, I'm glad that we made the statement. Thank you, uh, anarchists of Victoria, you know, Vancouver Island. I mean, thank you for doing the work to make the statement to show the solidarity we have with people who are trying to organize against oppression. <laughs> and I never, I wasn't born knowing that, you know? Like, I mean, our family were a little bit of a outlaw because we were Acadian. So we were kind of like, uh, you know, given a label of, of social stigma that I didn't become aware of until recently. I didn't know that the KKK put the French on the list of we hate you, fuck off. Like, I didn't know that. The KKK in Canada did that. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. Like, you know, the people like Kim, you didn't know that? I'm so naive, you know? But anyways, so I just wanted to say that that's why we've been doing the, the weekly housing rallies. And because of the, the stress that people are under, they want us to do weekly, but there's only a few of us doing the work, you know what I mean? So we kind of need help with people coming to the rallies. <laughs> I mean, I, everybody I talk to wants a home, but we're realizing that we need to actually fight for those homes. And that's how we got the social housing built in the 70s. Uh, community fought for decent, awesome social housing that the Canada Mortgage and Housing pay, gave loans for, but then the federal government killed it. They were so pissed. I mean, you know, across Canada, unions, feminists, women, uh, you know, radical groups formed, push, 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 got social housing built, and then they shit on it. Like basically, literally, right away, right after, until the point where everyone's like, social housing sucks. Well, it, the only parts that suck are because it was not funded anymore. And everybody got sucked into this for-profit thing. But anyway, so I'm really grateful for the, the support that uh, Anarchists of Vancouver Island and other uh, uh, you know, folks who are kind of disheartened with the groups that they've been involved in. And we realize that we need to defend each other and support each other and get, like if we're gonna really talk, if we really want freedom, there needs to be liberation for all. That means everybody gets to come to speak. So I'm not gonna be you know, uh, saying that if you have a red cap on and a yellow vest, and you're white, I don't want you here, because that's not true. Look in the mirror, I'm white. You know, I have a lot of friends who are from Britain and UK and English, and you know, a lot of anarchists exist everywhere. <laughs> um, so anyways, and I, I do identify as an anarchist. And I think I answered the question, I'm gonna stop now. Thank you.